and we just wanted to write songs. And that was after, you know, like making this monster of a record with Killjoy, which was all about Sonics. You know? Yes. Um, it was all about, like, that filling the stadium, that kind of... Well, I mean, actually, no, no, um, stadiums weren't really on the on the radar, radar at Killjoy. That was more like, we want, we are, we're sort of like... I remember Killjoy for me was, um, this is how, how I had it in my head, was, right, we, we've done that sort of industrial metal album, but I, we've been seeing bands like Skeptics and Bow to Space. How do we get that into the sound? Huh. Also things like, um, we listen to a lot of Beastie Boys, Check Your Head, listening to a lot of My Bloody Valentine, Loveless, you know, that wall of sound. It was heavy yeah. but beautiful, you yeah. know, like... And so we were trying to sort of do something... Uh, just just a wall of sound, but, um, yeah, a little more different, you know, just... I just can see that, because yeah, yeah. you've got that whole Deb's Night Out sort of Deb's thing. Night Out. Well. I mean, yeah. Deb's Night Out, I mean, the the end keyboard thing for me, that's total Skeptics Amalgam. Yeah. But, um, uh, I mean, uh, even, the, like, the, it's the way the w- way we've just done the blurry guitars and sing- things like Bitter and stuff like that, that's where we were sort of trying to do that sort of bow to spacey sort of... Uh, my bloody Valentine thing, mm. and then after that it was like, yeah, I think we we toured a lot around the world, and we saw bands like Oasis. I started listening to Guided by Voices, and that's how I got into the Beatles via Guided by Voices. Wow. So asked uh, about, about face, face, you yeah. know. Um, and then um, yeah, and then it was like, oh, let's see if we can write songs, songs, songs. And you know, I remember that record coming out, and our, our audiences halved, you know, like live audiences, like because everyone went, what what is this? Yeah. And what is this record? This is not joy at all yeah you know? and it wasn't yeah no it wasn't but then it's it's become like home again gets the voted as the the she hard song mm. but i always find it really surprising because i remember home again's your uh, your dave dobbin chin it, well it is it's almost like it is almost it's like loyal or, something. <laughs> or it's like um welcome home or it's like um <laughs> what's the luana's love do this to yes. me yeah yeah it's all like that you know it's like yeah it's, it's one our that- one yeah. Boozy pub crowds can can get sway into along it. Yeah, to can get into. And it was really, well, I mean, I remember riding the riff, and we were just, we were basically just trying to rip off um, "Immigrant Song" by Led Zeppelin. Hmm. And uh, then I, I happened to, I think the lyrics actually quite on the money. That's yeah. all. And um, yeah, but distinctly um, that that she had guitar sound. Yeah, yeah. Is it? Yeah, that, yeah. that, that, that but there. Yeah. Yeah, that was just a really lucky accident again. You know, just but it's but it's synonymous with with Shihad. Is that from a particular type of guitar pedal or something? No, no, no. That was pretty much straight up. Is um, it? Yeah, it's, it's just. It's, I think. A, Could you pick up any electric guitar and make that same sound? Oh yeah, definitely. I think so. Okay. Yeah. You, you might have to play around with the knobs on the amp a bit. Right. But, right. But um, yeah, there is a bit of knob playing. Yeah, a bit, a bit of knob playing. I mean, definitely a, f- a fair fair whack and knob. Yeah. Yeah. So, what was the process of selecting the the meanest hits? I mean, was that easy? Um, actually, um, uh, it was sort of easy. I mean, what what we did was we definitely took notice of what the fans were saying. We we definitely had quite a strong idea. We, I mean, obviously, if it's a greatest hits, you've got to do you've got to look at the singles you've released off all the albums, mm. um, which we did, and uh, then went, oh, that's actually not a bad list of songs. Um, and then when we had the double disc version the deluxe version we had a bit more room to play um so that was like more like okay well, what are we pl- what's what's our favorite songs you know yeah well okay most of them were actually in that list of singles which is cool then we could actually look at what songs we like playing live what songs the fans like what songs you know keep cropping up everywhere and um i mean there's a little bit of argy budget at the end of the process but only over two or three songs okay you know not not it was it actually we you know came to a consensus pretty quickly you know it's quite nice that it's it's obvious sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's the, we had the luxury of thirty eight being able to pick thirty eight tracks for the double CD. So, mm. yeah. um, it comes a year after, of course, the Legacy Award mm. last year. But it was it strange actually this year. You had the Legacy Award last year and then come back, and now you're still winning awards for stuff that for you're doing now for a recent record. <laughs> yeah, I mean, no, that I mean that is really really cool. But yeah. like, I mean, like we said, you know, um, when we accepted it, I mean. Uh, for us, the music awards is like a, a, a it's supposed to be a leg up mm. so that, uh, you know, pe- people who haven't heard of some of the underground stuff can get to, he- you know, know about it. Yeah. So we were really, really, um, we we're really, really, you know, stoked to be awarded there. I mean, it's great. But, um, and I really love Ignite. I think it's a really good record. But um, for me, Cairo and Beast Wars, mm. yeah, like they're the future of, you know, I mean, well, you know, there's even bands. You know, after they've come after them since, you know. But I think, you know, Beast Wars made a really, really great record, awesome live. Cairo are just awesome live, without a doubt. And Big Face is one of those songs that, 
um, when I, I remember hearing Cora's big face and going, well, why didn't I think of that? It's so good, right. you know. It's like a mixture of Led Zeppelin, Radiohead, lots of good bands that I like, you know, Queens, but it's still got a New Zealand sort of sound to it, and it's like, it, yeah, I was jealous. It seems, <laughs> it seems to me quite often, because the last time I spoke to you, it was about the um, the Adults Project, yeah, and, yeah. and often you're in, in, in awe of other musicians, and, and it almost feels like you can't believe that you're making decent music yourself. Oh, yeah, I want to know. It's, it's, I mean, it's, like, it's, it's, pretty, it's a pretty awesome position to be in, to be actually able to make music. I mean, mm. it's a... It's a totally privileged job, you know. Mm. It's ridiculous that I even get a. Ch- I, I sort of can't believe it, you know. Like that's what I do for my living. You know? Yeah, it's it's ridiculous. So um, I think I appreciate it more now uh, than I did when I was younger. When I was younger, it was more like, yeah, we deserve what's coming to us, and rah rah rah, and you know, we just wanted to take over the world. But now it's like, wow, we've actually spent twenty three years making music, and yeah. That's what we do for a living, you know. It's like not many people get a chance to do that. And of course, the music that you make, like like tracks like "Home Again," can be pretty powerful and emote, uh, uh, you know, mm. evoke all kinds of emotions. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, did you have you ever felt like lending your any of your music to political Other campaigns? Well, or? I mean, uh, I'm so disillusioned with um, the modern sort of democratic process that I just, I just, I mean, like, I mean, I was bo- I was brought up a Labour voter, you know, like like that's my family, you know. Um, uh, but this year, it's just like um, I mean, it's actually I've seen it happen in all the sort of Western democracies. Uh, both both sides are coming so far into the middle just because of what are their, their you know their marketing people are telling them they should say rather than going this is what I believe. Yeah, uh, I just find it so disillusioning the whole process that I mean I, I've always been one to say you know like go out there and vote because you know that's our right and blah blah blah. But everyone, I mean, uh, I'm just so cynical about the the process itself. Mm. You can see it in the way they talk. You can see both sides just playing the populist game, and it's just like. No wonder people aren't turning up to vote because we don't believe you, you know. Like, um, so I don't know. I, I I wouldn't be happy aligning myself no. with anyone really. To Fair enough. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So, the, um, are you going to be getting out there and celebrating the release of of this album with some tours? With some shows. Um, probably not till um, um, about May next year. Wow. Yeah. So summer off. Yeah. Well, apart from the Cora Gold show. Yeah. Um, and also Homegrown. Um, yeah, nothing. Yeah, nothing. Okay. I'm doing. Cool. Yeah, I'm. I'm sort of relax. Um. Well, yeah, I'm doing a bit of family stuff, and also, I mean, there's weird projects like um. I think the Christchurch Symphony Orchestra want to do the adults album live, so that's going to take a little bit of work to okay. get that into. Even though it's not until next year, um, that's taking a bit of work. Um, yeah, I want to spend some time with my family. Actually, yeah. to the truth. Um, I also want to start writing the next Shehad record. You know, um, I've had a few ideas recently. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I'm sort of just yeah making music still. It's good. Sounds like a good time for John Too Good and Shane. It's fun, man. Life's life's good. I cannot complain at all. Yeah. At all right. Well, the meanest hits is out now. Go and get some. Yeah. And um, yeah, put it on at the next party or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sort of be your favourite. Yeah, do it. All right. Take some acid. <laughs> Thanks, John. <laughs> See ya. <laughs>